on parle français à Vancouver, on aussi parle le chinois à Vancouver, parce qu'on a une grosse, grande communauté chinoise là-bas. Mais euh, on est bilingue, et, euh, mais on va présenter en, en anglais. Alors, merci pour nous avoir invités. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, four. Yeah. Four. Uh, yeah, number four. Um, thank you for inviting uh, myself and my colleague um, Tom Getz. And uh, we're really honored to come because I think it's very timely that um, we are now thinking about uh, pushing forward with uh, neuro, neuro uh, orthopedic uh, uh, rehabilitative uh, goals and teams. Uh, I had met Thierry Deltom last year when he gave a presentation to us. And we were blown away about how you were so much far ahead in terms of neurotomy, percutaneous uh, tenotomies, and the future direction. So we'll be talking to you about our um, experience in Canada. So our objective today is to describe two clinics uh, that we're involved with, uh, myself and Tom. Uh, the GF Strong Rehabilitation Center, which is our main rehab center in Uh, Vancouver, and also a privately designed, private in Canada uh, means private practice, but still government funded in that we are paid as physicians and the patient does not have to pay uh, to see us. So we'll be talking about these two clinics. And the other one is a very novel model that um, we have been involved uh, in the development. And we also want to see how this neuro uh, uh, rehabilitation and uh, uh, neurology and physiatry as well as uh, orthopedic surgeon can collaborate for better care. So first, I just want to see that, tell you that we're not from Montreal. Montreal is on the East Coast. We are on the West Coast of uh, Canada and very close to the US, about uh, 100 kilometers from uh, Seattle. And we also have a very beautiful city and we do not have lunch in between work, but I think we should also make that as a standard. Uh, but this is Vancouver in its uh, beauty. When it's not rainy and it's not foggy. <laughs> and I bring this slide up because in 2010 we had the uh, Olympics in Vancouver and this is Whistler, one of the mountains about an hour and a half away from our town. But the reason I bring this up is thanks to the VANOC, the Olympic movement that the orthopedic surgeons and the physiatrists m uh, got together more because we used to work as team events together and that bridged the gap to move forward in developments of such clinics that we have now in Canada. This is where You work, Tom. This is Tom's uh, hospital, one of the oldest hospitals in Vancouver, St. Paul's Hospital. And this is the other town that uh, we'll be describing, New Westminster, which is about 30 kilometers from Vancouver, serving the Fraser Health Authority. And GF Strong, the other clinic that I'll be describing, it will be serving Vancouver Coastal. We're looking at serving each hospital is serving 1.5 million people uh, as a catchment area. This is a hospital that I, I work at, Royal Kilimanjaro Hospital, uh, very close to the private clinic that we developed. So just looking at historically, we only have four collaborative uh, PMNR or orthopedic clinics in Canada, and two of which we'll be, we will be describing today. The other one is uh, from my very good friend and colleague, Dr. Lalith Satkunam, he's here today, and he also has a combined clinic with orthopedics and uh, PMNR in Alberta and then Tom Miller, my colleague in London, Ontario, the east coast of Canada. So how do we start? We started in 2003 when Tom Getz um, and my colleague Dr. Andrew Travla started the first multidisciplinary complex musculoskeletal clinic and that evolved into uh, doing more of a developmental clinic for um, conditions such as neuro uh, rehab uh, conditions in 2006 And that evolved into the spasticity clinic uh, in 2006 at GF Strong, where Tom uh, worked there as, as our um, orthopedic surgeon. In 2012, we invited Tom to start working in our clinic and also collaborating in a transdisciplinary uh, team approach. So our model of care at GF Strong in Vancouver, we are rehab units, government funded, um, and we have 56 beds of inpatient, uh, but outpatient, we have created a spasticity clinic within the hospital. We have four physiatrists and one orthopedic surgeon, a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, nurse, and an EMG technician. And what is interesting in this clinic, um, the physios, OTs, and the nurses, they all have the same template, and they take the notes down, so as they come to the physician, most of the history is taken by the team. It's a truly a transdisciplinary team approach, where we can discuss the patient in front of them, and then we can make the decision uh, with the team. And uh, Tom, you can tell a little bit about how you get, you're involved in that clinic. 
Uh, which one, the GF Strong? Yeah, GF Strong. Uh, so GF Strong basically is not simply a spasticity clinic. It's a combination of any complex musculoskeletal uh, clinic. And it was started initially because a, a lot of the time, uh, having the collegiality of two points of view that come from not directly opposite directions, but surgical and non-surgical are really valuable in trying to, to find the right balance of intervention. So initially it would be I'm bringing a patient who had a complex brachial plexus injury that you might be considering doing a tendon transfer uh, uh, or even a nerve transfer, but you didn't know what was still available, what muscles were still working, and whether they had low-level uh, effect. Because as you know, when you transfer a muscle, you lose a grade of strength. So knowing that you, uh, you're going to transfer a muscle at a full strength made a lot of sense. And so having uh, a uh, rehabilitation uh, physiatrist available who could perform uh, immediate EMG analysis on muscles, specific muscles that we were targeting, was highly valuable. And then it evolved into more and more spasticity because that's a, an area of obvious great need. I should clarify that I'm an upper extremity surgeon only, and so there really is a deficit. So in Canada, in the, in the, in the publicly funded health system, the wait time to see an orthopedic surgeon is six months to a year. That's the wait time to see them. The wait time to surgery can be another two years after that. Uh, and so if you have separate centers that are assessing patients, uh, and uh, say Rajiv Rebai uh, saw somebody that needed uh, an orthopedic assessment, or he felt he did, he doesn't have the direct inter interaction with that uh, orthopedic surgeon, and he may have to refer, it may not arrive for that uh, orthopedic surgeon to assess until a year later and then there's a further uh, delay of surgery. This is a terribly inefficient uh, way of doing things. The advantage of these combined clinics is we can assess together uh, and make surgical plans immediately. Uh, and I make every effort to try and expedite the surgery as well. And it'll come down to development of the, spinal, uh, the um, private clinic, the new Westminster Clinic, because of the inefficiencies of the system, which I'll talk a bit later on. And I'll be talking about this tomorrow as well. So we, we use a goal attainment scale. We've gone away from using the Ashford scale. We do document it for research purposes, but we use a Tardier and the GAS as the main um, outcome measures, which are, are in our templates that are shared by each clinician. We are very involved in teaching our graduates, uh, postgraduate training. We also do ultrasound teaching and EMG nerve stimulating, uh, stimulated tra training and electrodiagnostics as they come to the spasticity combined clinic. This is GF Strong Rehab Center, the um, British Columbia mandated, uh, provincially a mandated clinic for rehab. And as I said, we have the combined clinic uh, of uh, having the complex orthopedic uh, physiatrist clinic with the upper extremity problems. We see peripheral nerve injuries, amputation, neuromas, uh, entrapment neuropathy, CRPS, TMR, contractures, post-burn, so a variety of conditions. And the spasticity clinic is on a separate day, uh, twice per week. And we have, um, uh, as I said, the physio, OT, um, nurses, as well as, as well as physiatrists, of course, in the clinic, along with the surgeon. When we look at cases of our uh, demographics from the last six months, we see that spasticity is our number one referral, especially for contracture management, uh, elbow, wrist, and fingers. Peripheral nerve lesions, 15% spinal cord, uh, qu questions for tenodesis, uh, tendon transfers, and also uh, heterotopic ossification, uh, ossification. But we're also seeing an increased number of uh, AIDP and CIDP post Guillain Barre uh, having contractures um, because of lack of immobilization. So that's been an interesting area that we are also seeing, and also Charcot tooth and peripheral neuropathies. This is our EMG clinic and spasticity clinic at GF Strong. And I move now to the private clinic that we developed. Again, private being we are funded by the government and patient does not pay to see us, but we have an efficiency system where we can get things going very quickly in this clinic that the health authority may not be able to give us. Um, in this clinic, we see prim primarily spasticity, and this is over the last six months, stroke being the main uh, pathology, traumatic brain injuries, and cerebral palsy. And I highlighted these. These are the ones that I'll be referring patients from this pool, about 20% to Tom, for orthopedic assessment. And I've come to this uh, design of this clinic that we uh, designed that is not hospital-based, and it is very interesting for us because we can evolve. When we come from this conference, I can go back to clinic, and we can adapt a few ideas in the clinic without having to waste time with uh, politics of the hospital. So if I need to buy a bed that goes up and down, I don't have to ask for a, a donation or grant for that, we can get it going. And we have made an infrastructure uh, within our clinic to fund our nurses, which is not funded by the government. Uh, the patient does not pay us. We have
put money into the ultrasound machines and EMG, but we initially had a grant from Allergan, seed money, about four years ago to hire our first nurse. And through that seed money, we were able to develop an infrastructure to sustain the nurses. Now we have two nurses who take our histories and make it very efficient with multiple rooms so we can see more patients, inject more patients, and also do more surgical assessment within a day. So efficiency is very, very good, and we believe in a one-stop shop. And what we have is within about uh, uh, 1,500 square feet, we have developed a small gate assessment uh, lab. We have four injection rooms of the same size uh, with high-low beds. Uh, we have ultrasound machines in each room with um, a screen. And uh, we also have a lift, so we can actually lift patients who are coming from care homes into um, our, our beds. And what we have designed is ergonomically, we can see uh, any patient very quickly within multiple rooms. And we also have a neurosurgeon that uh, is in our um, clinic. And we also have an orthotist, so we can do the bracing on site, which is very nice. So again, we can cast and serial cast as we finish the toxin. We can even do pre-Botox uh, uh, during uh, intraoperative and then post-operative uh, as well. And I just want to finish my bit with collaborative approach. We have really taken uh, on the GAS, goal attainment scale. Our team published a paper just recently looking at the goal attainment scale and can we retrospectively look at uh, outcome measures. And we've seen that it can be used in a heterogeneous population. So we would like to use a GAS to show that clinic models may make a change for outcome for the patient. Does the interaction between the physician, the physiatrist, and the surgeon improve care? And it'd be interesting and simple to do, and I propose that we may look at that in the future. I'll pass on to you. Uh, yeah, another tool, as uh, 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 Professor Del Tom uh, uses, we, we are using imaging uh, and uh, some sim fairly simple apps to describe range of motion prior and after surgery, because not, pro uh, not documenting it before it gives you very little assurance that you've got uh, a good outcome at the, at the uh, back end of it. One of the great things uh, that uh, the collaborative process has, uh, has managed to produce is, is just ideas for research, not necessarily related to uh, spasticity, and we hope to do more in, in trying to uh, get government funding uh, by monitoring our patients and thus being able to apply for funds. But uh, there have been a couple papers that have come out simply because of questions that are asked in, uh, from an orthopedic perspective or from a, a, a rehabilitation perspective that have then been able to proceed uh, to the presentation of a solution that no normally would be uh, available to either one group or the other on their own. And this has allowed us to produce a couple of papers, uh, one on the strength of the pronate acroditis, its contribution to uh, pronation, uh, which is important mainly in orthopedics and uh, treatment of distal radius fractures, uh, and another one uh, about the strength of the uh, flexor pulsus longus and its contribution to pin strength. Uh, this comes into importance in the otherwise normal thumb uh, and making a decision as to whether or not to reconstruct it or, or simply fuse the IP joint. Um, and that's about all I have to add. And we'll just uh, finish off with this picture here. This is St. Paul's Hospital uh, during Christmas time. And they light it up to raise money for um, uh, one of the organizations, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you.